right, guys. Kevin with Louisiana Snake ID here. LA Snake Boys with a Z on YouTube is what you're watching right here. We got a treat for you today. In the grass right here is an absolutely gorgeous juvenile venomous cottonmouth water moccasin. A lot of people think moccasins are all these dark colors. Um, I'm here to show you real quick that as juveniles, a lot of times as juveniles, so he's vibrating his tail. Not sure about the camera, I don't blame him. Uh, as juveniles, these guys often have really bright colors. Um, so this is a venomous snake. This is one of the venomous species in Louisiana. Um, but what most people don't realize is the colors they, they range in. So a lot of times with the juveniles, they'll have two things that are really cool indicators. The bright colors, uh, it's a pixelated pattern. Kind of make sure you see the pattern real good while he's moving. Um, not too close, but yeah, see how, he, how beautiful his pattern is? Um, but also watch the end of the tail real quick. I'm gonna see if I can get him. Once it's, let's get on this dry ground right here because his tail will show up better for you, buddy. I don't pick them up very hard at this thing, so they fall on the ground a lot of times. All right, so, let's see if I can get them to curl up. Here, buddy. You know what, he feels a container. I'm, I'm gonna give him a container. All right, let's see. Let me get the container. Let him sit right there for a sec. Um, the container kind of keeps him calm. Be right back, guys. All right, <laughs> so I'm gonna see if I can get him to curl up like he was doing earlier on our Facebook video. There's another snake underneath him we're gonna talk about in a second. See if I can just kind of slow him down. Look at the tip of his tail right there, guys. He's a juvenile moccasin, so have this bright tip on the tail. It's like a copperhead will. Most people think it's just a distinct feature to copperheads, but it's also moccasins and also timber rattles. I mean, uh, pygmy rattles things will have it as well. Um, I'm trying to hold him still for a sec. So, if you see a small snake in your yard and it doesn't have a bright tip on the tail, it's usually going to be a harmless snake. You can't always rely on that because sometimes the snake will lose the end of its tail in a, uh, an altercation with a predator. Um, but generally speaking, it won't have the tip of a tail if it's a non venomous snake. This guy right here, like I said, he's not trying to chase me. He's like, oh, sorry, buddy. I'm trying to keep you still enough to see. Um, this guy's probably a month or two years old, uh, two, a month or two old, uh, born this year. Uh, these venomous snakes, uh, venomous moccasins, are actually born live birth. Um, which, uh, how can I tell that this is a venomous snake? Okay, a few features right now. First, the bright tip of his tail. There's one feature, and then look at the back of his head. You notice how his eyeballs are not visible? On a water snake, his eyeballs would be very visible right there. And you'd be able to tell, okay, this is a, this is a venomous, uh, harmless snake. This guy, because you can't see his eyeballs from the top of his head, you can know that it's a venomous water moccasin or a pit viper. So, moccasin and the pit vipers, rattlesnakes are pit vipers, and so are copperheads. So they all have the same feature as far as their head goes, where you wouldn't be able to see the eyes from the top. This guy has got the dark, Zoro mask on the side of his eye. Look, I'm gonna hold him a little bit. You're gonna have to get out of the sunlight. Yeah, see how the dark uh, Zoro mask? Ooh, he struck. It's the first time he's actually struck, to be honest. Um, ooh, -wee. not happy camper right now. So notice his mouth is very pink. They always people say, oh, their, their mouth is so white. You can tell it's a moccasin right away. We showed his fangs real quick. That's pretty cool. I'm not even pinching him right now. I'm just kind of holding him down. Um, but it's not a happy camper. We can't get that close on the live videos from Facebook, we can get this close from YouTube uh, because of the GoPro's amazing little camera. Um, but he's just trying to be left alone, okay? He's, he, I don't even know if he's dumped any venom to be completely honest. I can't see if it's on the screen or not. Um, but uh, he's vibrating his tail. That's a sign of defense. He wants to be left alone. He's flattened out his body. Yes, I'm pushing him down on him some, but he's definitely flattened his body out. Um, and then he's struck because he doesn't have any other choice. We, we're not leaving him alone. We're doing a video, so he has no option other than biting. Um, I'm not letting him get away at the moment. But to see the, no the dark Zorro mask on the side of his head is outlined by white lines. Um, that's, that's another typical. Sometimes the, their heads are so dark and the lines so dark that it, the Zorro mask is hard to see, but usually there's a light line on the side of their head, which will give you that indicator too. You see that uh, the top and bottom of the, uh, the dark line through the eyes is a little lighter. That's one way we can tell as well. So we have four indicators. We got the tip of his tail, We've got the, the fact that his eyes are not visible from the top of his head. We've got, excuse me for sweating, guys. Uh, we've got the pixelated pattern on his body. And we've also got the uh, dark Zora mask on the side of his head. And the fact that he doesn't have the dark vertical, line, uh, dark vertical lines along the side of his mouth. Um, now, the nine of them snakes will have. Oh, sunlight's getting you. A really absolutely gorgeous snake, guys. These guys get mistaken for... Um, for copperheads all the time because sometimes they're really bright and orange and people think that only copperheads have the tip of their tail like that but uh here to show you that these guys also have it um 
gorgeous little snake. He just wants to be left alone and he's gonna be released. What do we do with venomous snakes and why do we do videos? Well, we do videos with them, guys, to educate you guys, okay? So you can see them up close because I don't want anybody getting up close and personal with them unless they know what they're doing, okay? We deal with snakes all the time, but I still respect this snake, okay? I'm not holding him with my hands. You notice that? I use the hook. I use a grabber or a hook um, because there's no reason to hold it by hand, okay? Uh, does it look cool? Maybe so, but some people think it looks cooler, but it's not worth the risk of... Uh, his fang slipping through his mouth or him turning just enough to hook my finger but it's also not worth the risk of showing you guys the dangerous handling like that so I don't free handle them um, I don't want my boys seeing that I don't want you guys seeing that okay because we can learn just enough uh, about them and see them up close and personal without having to hold them out with our hands um, again this is a venomous northern cottonmouth water moccasin here in Louisiana um, it's one of our juvenile species and underneath them in a container I have a harmless water snake and also one Kyler's handing me right now I'm gonna hold this is a, uh, a non-venomous juvenile plain bellied water snake they're often found with no pattern at all but when they're when they're juveniles like this they have a pattern on their body it's kind of hard to see him he's a little bitey so he's biting me non-stop um, he's scared I don't blame him um, but this moccasin would eat the snake so I don't want him to get him too close together I don't want him to think it's food and I don't want him to hurt the snake by biting him. But um, uh, notice how this guy, the top of his head, while he's biting me, zoom in on it, can you watch, watch the moccasin? Yeah. See how his, his eyeballs are visible from the top of his head? And they go back to the moccasin and show how it's not? See how you don't see his eyeballs, you just see the top of his head? Yeah, that's a difference right there. That's how you can tell from a picture of what it is. You can't see the dark zoro mask, but you can see that his eyes are on the side of his head, unlike these uh, water snakes. Now come back to the water snake real quick, bud. Watch him again. Um, this guy, notice on the side of his head, he's got the dark vertical lines that I was talking about. See those dark lines? They are the sign of a non-venomous snake in the United States. If you see a snake that has these dark lines, it's gonna be a harmless snake. Not all non-venomous snakes have it, but if they do have it, it's a cool looking dragonfly just chilling on us. Uh, but if they do have it, that means they're non-venomous, okay? So these lines are actually visible from a good distance. I'm not sure how clear you can see on the video, but from a good distance, I you can see that. the dark lines. So that's why it's more reliable than to say the pupil shape, okay? Because people will say, you want to, these guys have a cat eye pupil. Technically, yes, they do, okay? But also, a couple things. Pupils, to see the pupil shape, I can't see his pupil shape from right here, and I'm almost within striking distance. I'd have to get right about here to clearly see his pupils, okay? And cottonmouths have some of the hardest pupils to see. So you don't want to put yourself so close that you get bit, so pupil shape isn't reliable. And also, like we've talked about before, pupils dilate. Guys, think about if you have a pet cat or have you ever seen someone's pet cat? They have cat eye pupils. Make sure he's on the screen. You see him? Yeah. Okay. Um, they have cat eye pupils, guys, but when it's dark, their eyes round out. They're round out because the pupils dilate. They round out to catch as much light as possible. So that's two ways why pupils aren't reliable, okay? You don't want to think, oh, let me look at his pupils. And if somebody posts a picture, well, oh, if he has cat eye, that's not the truth, guys. It's not true. Because uh, in the United States, coral snakes have round pupils, and they're very venomous. Um, what other snakes have venomous, uh, have uh, round pupils? We got cobras. We got mambas. We got crates. Inland taipan. All of them are super venomous snakes. And, um, and they're completely uh, dangerous to humans. But they don't have, uh, they have round people. So you don't want to rely on people shape for that reason as well. Come here, buddy. Not a happy camper. All right, one more snake I want to get out real quick. I'm going to hand you back the plain belly. And his belly is super plain. Look how cool his belly is. So they're called plain bellies or yellow bellied uh, water snakes. So this is a harmless plain bellied water snake. And I got one more snake right here. That's another harmless one. Is it a moccasin? Okay. This guy looks very similar to him too. Check this guy out. Look how similar he looks. This is a harmless plain bellied water snake. Okay. Notice how he's got the pattern. It's similar to the moccasin, okay? I can see like an amateur not knowing what they're dealing with here. Oh, I can see, okay, it kind of looks like a moccasin. I'll give you that. But two things real quick. Zoom in on his head. Notice how his, eye, his pupils, or his eyes are um, visible from the top of his head. A member, he's not on his. And then come back real quick one more time. Well, that's a cool shot. Uh, one more time. I'll show you what this guy has too. He has the dark vertical lines on the side of his mouth. As he grows bigger, those lines will be more visible and they'll show up really easy, okay? So you can see those from a safe distance. You can see those from outside the strike zone. I always tell people, you want to learn an indication, uh, some identification tips that you can see from a distance, okay? So you can't see the pupils from a distance and they don't, they're not reliable. So, um, 
I want to show you these guys real quick um, so you can see this one before we relocated. This was caught in a house uh, in Walker, Louisiana. Absolutely gorgeous snake, okay? I mean, he's got some cool, cool look. He's coming towards me. He's not trying to hurt me, okay? He's just coming this way because that's where he wants to go. He wants to go to the woods behind him. Um, but we re uh, we do snake relocation, guys, whether they're venomous or non-venomous. Give us a, a message on our Facebook page. Louisiana Snake ID is our Facebook page, okay? LA Snake Boys with a Z is our YouTube channel. Um, send us a message. We'll get with you and try to get it relocated. If we're too far away, I'll send somebody out to do it for us, okay? Uh, we have friends all over the state that'll come out if needed. So we don't want a state to get killed. These guys serve a purpose in the ecosystem. These guys eat um, rodents, which carry diseases. They eat fleas and ticks, which carry diseases. So they serve a purpose. You don't need to kill them. Notice he hasn't chased after me. The only time he's shown any kind of um, defensive posture or tried to bite is when the camera was right up in his face. Generally, he's just leaving it alone, okay? Um, so he's not chasing me. I'm not, if I took off running, that's not chasing. Uh, back up just for a second. I wanna go over a, a myth that people have and that a snake will chase them, okay? We'll put this little uh, broadband in, juvenile broadband and water snake back up. Got a really cool belly. Usually it's a, a more of a reddish color, but he's got like a, uh, almost kind of like a corn snake or a rat snake belly. Uh, currently, it'll get brighter colors later. I'll put you up in here real quick, guys. But, um, so let me go over a myth real quick that snakes chase people. All right, people will say that snakes will chase them. If this snake comes towards me, that's not chasing me, okay? That's just going in the same direction. A lot of times, this guy's safe place is behind me. So he's trying to go to his burrow. He's trying to get back into the river. He's trying to get back into the lake to swim away. So people misinterpret a snake coming at them as chasing them. That's not the same thing. Think of it like a dog chasing you. If a dog's chasing you and you zigzag and keep running, it's gonna follow you. It's gonna go wherever you go. It's gonna run to the left when you go to the left. It's gonna run to the right when you go to the left. That's chasing. Going in the same direction isn't chasing, okay? So if the snake comes at me, no matter how fast it's coming, it's not chasing me. If I take off and run that way and it follows me and, it, and I keep running around the yard like this and it zigzags, then that would be chasing, guys. So that's the miscon uh, misconception I want to get uh, get out there because snakes do not chase people. It's a myth. It's not true. And uh, it's something that ends up getting a lot of snakes killed because people share that information when they're not sure what they're talking about. Um, so one more time, juvenile venomous cotton is a little blurry right there, I think. Yeah. yeah. Juvenile venomous cottonmouth water moccasin. This guy right here isn't deadly uh, unless you're very allergic to venom. Uh, in the history of the United States, only two people have died from a cottonmouth bite. One of them was so far back, they don't even have a record if he died from anaphylactic shock, which is like somebody who's allergic to bees or ant bites. Um, if they bite me or sting me, it's not gonna bother me at all. But my son is very allergic to them, so he could swell up or if he gets, uh, tilting the camera, or if he gets bit by, uh, stung by a bunch of wasps, he could go into anaphylactic shock, meaning he has a severe allergic reaction to the venom. So if somebody were to get bit by this, if they're allergic to venom, they'd have a lot worse chance, okay? They'd have a lot more go wrong with them than most people. Um, so only two people in the history of the United States have died from them. One was a long time ago, and the other one was, got bit and then did so many drugs, uh, he had so many drugs in the system that that's what uh, the cause of death was listed as. It wasn't listed as a cottonmouth bite. So I hear people often say, these are bad dudes, or these are deadly cottonmouths. They're not deadly, guys. These aren't like a mamba. These aren't like a cobra, or a uh, inland taipan, or anything like that. They don't have nearly the toxic vic uh, toxicity of their venom as those snakes do. That's just the way it is. Uh, in, in the United States, we have various types of rattlesnakes. All of their venom is more potent than a cottonmouth. Tyler, make sure it's, it's focusing on it. Is. Um, a lot of them, all of them have more toxic venom than a cottonmouth. And then comes a cottonmouth and then a copperhead's even below that. So a coral snake, rattlesnakes, I meant to mention coral snakes. Coral snakes' venom is the most toxic. They just don't pump out as much because they're so small. And then ven then co uh, rattlesnakes, then cottonmouth, and then lastly is the copperhead. So I know somebody died last year from a copperhead bite. Oh yeah, snake life, guys. That's what we're about right here. Make sure you go to our website, Louisiana Snake ID, for some merch. Um, so I want to make sure you know that. We actually have decals now. I think they're way back over there. Um, maybe we'll walk over there and grab one. Um, but go to our page, uh, LouisianaSnakeID.com. You can order all of our merch. But um, again, I was starting to talk about it, and Collar came zoomed in. Um, somebody died from a copperhead bite last year, but what the story didn't really tell was it died from anaphylactic shock. Within minutes, the guy was dead because he's allergic to venom. Not because the copperhead is a deadly snake, it's just because they're allergic. So it just happens to be some people are allergic to things. Somebody could die from peanuts and it wouldn't bother most people. So it's just a matter of that, guys. But um, Louisiana Snake ID, the ID part is very important if you go to look for us on Facebook. Louisiana Snake ID, the ID is for identification. 
Uh, we teach snake identification. We teach snake education. Um, and now that we have the GoPro, we can get up close and personal with these venomous snakes to show you shots that we can't show on our phones uh, just because it's not safe. So I'm gonna um, kind of lift this guy up so you can see his belly. Let's see if he'll start moving a little bit. Um, let's see, now that he's sliding. I'm using this uh, grabber like, his, like a hook right now. Gotta let him slither a little bit. Get underneath this, his belly. Get out the light. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous snake, guys. Notice he hasn't been aggressive with me. People say snakes are aggressive. Snakes aren't aggressive, they're defensive. Um, think of it like a dog growling or a cat hissing. Snakes can't really do that. So they do two things. They'll vibrate their tails, whether they're rattlesnake or non-venomous snake, you saw, or a venomous snake or non-venomous snake. He was scared, so he vibrated his tail. This sounds like a rattle. And then they'll open their mouth or they'll strike. That's all they can do, guys. So um, just make sure you give the snake space. He'll be perfectly fine. If you saw this guy and you walked right past it, you'd be fine. If you go get something to kill him, you had enough time to call somebody to get him and relocate him. So always use that method. Always get somebody to come out and get him. Um, super chill snake for a venomous snake, guys. Uh, not free hold. I'm not going to free handle him. But it's, um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys. Um, check out our website, Louisiana Snake ID, for our merch. And follow us on YouTube, uh, LA Snake Boys with Disaster, where you want to subscribe. And then Louisiana Snake ID on Facebook for education and snake information. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next video. Make sure you share this with all your friends and family, and we'll see you soon.